Section 1 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 1 Introduction i realize that the doors of a new life are opening within me and that i have been awakened as if from a sleep now it seems that never again can i go back to the life which is so trivial unsatisfying and without eternal purpose it is a supreme pleasure to live in an atmosphere which is all light here i see about me those who have already laid hold upon immortality and viewing them i realize that i too am a child of the kingdom i met abdul baha shortly after our arrival in the household he said blessed are you that the word of god has reached you and found your soul awake blessed it is that the east and the west have met in the kingdom of god as christ prophesied i said it is a heavenly privilege to know the truth and become a child of the kingdom he replied i hope to meet you in the spiritual kingdom i said that will be my wish and desire he answered i will pray for you from the words of abdul baha moral life consists in the government of oneself immortality is government of a human soul by the divine will the soul is the sanctuary of god reason is his throne our actions reveal what we are no matter what the tongue speaks every drop of blood shed in the cause of god will raise up one hundred believers martyrdom is the supreme test of belief great martyrs will arise in this cause in the years to come a believer is sometimes called upon to suffer a living martyrdom are miracles performed in this day miracles are constantly being performed in the material world about us yet they make but little impression every prophet has his own particular mission and function he does not come merely to perform miracles people do not trouble themselves about the proof of miracles the function of a physician is not to make a tree talk be firm in the west let the foundation principles of this truth become deep rooted hold fast until the fullness of reality comes to you christ's teachings were established largely through the firmness of paul many calamities will befall the believers but by loving the cause of god it will be uplifted in human souls and the believers strengthened love one another live in unity under the tent of god firmness and love make unity god will assist all who serve in this cause spirit is universal man is created in a potential degree of spirit growth is from the mental station into the spiritual something like the development from soldier to commander god himself cannot compel the soul to become spiritual the exercise of a free human will is necessary we can point the way and furnish the example we should do little things as well as great things for the love of god 
we should love people because they are god's creatures are the manifestations sinless yes there must be a standard of perfection for human example are manifestations limited they are limited only by the capacity of souls to whom they reveal the word what becomes of an undeveloped infant soul it rests with the mercy of god and through the eternal bounty it will not be deprived of that mercy will the tablets and utterances of baha'u'llah be added to our bible no they are a distinct revelation of god and will form a book larger than our bible what will be the future of this revelation know this that the revelation of baha'u'llah is the word of god there will not be a home which does not contain a believer look not at the present turn your vision upon the future all the books written concerning the history of this revelation number about fifty volumes will the money of the rich ever be divided among the people without revolution or bloodshed will some men amass great fortunes in the future while others remain poor will the law prevent this condition of affairs it will not be possible in the future for men to amass great fortunes by the labor of others the rich will willingly divide they will come to this gradually naturally by their own volition it will never be accomplished by war and bloodshed the ruling power or government cannot treat the rich unjustly to force them to divide their wealth would be unjust in the future proportionately about three quarters of the profits will go to the workman and one quarter to the owner this condition will prevail in about one century it will certainly come to pass the blessed perfection has revealed a tablet called tablet of the spiritual world all who read it are filled with an anxious desire to leave this world and enter the next condition so wonderful are the glories of the spiritual kingdom in persia one man who read this tablet killed himself he could not wait for the happiness it promised him another a youth of esfahan could not stand the spiritual food contained in this tablet and lost his reason i once lived in a cave on mount carmel one day i went to the carmelite monastery and asked to see someone saying i had a message to deliver they refused to see me or hear my message i said i will put it in writing if you will read it they still refused so i returned to akka in great sadness walking the whole distance of nine miles everlasting life is the bounty of god it is like the sea of reality the believers are the waves of that sea one great sea a thousand waves as one again everlasting life is like the rays of the sun and the believers are windows the sun which produces the light is one and the same into these soul windows the same light enters and various things within are illuminated the kingdom is like a garden the flowers differ in color and perfume yet they receive growth beauty and bounty from the one god and are developed by the same divine breeze truth is like the light which is always the same the souls of believers are as mirrors which reflect the light 
truth is like the light of a candle which does not vary yet the candlestick which holds it may change each year the rose is the same beautiful flower although it appears in different gardens what will be the food of the future fruit and grains the time will come when meat will no longer be eaten medical science is only in its infancy yet it has shown that our natural diet is that which grows out of the ground the people will gradually develop up to the condition of this natural food there is no appointed length of life for man lengthen your life by living according to god's spiritual laws then you will live forever this is the true longevity the real life the real life is eternal happiness and existence in the knowledge of god jesus was a dyer by trade he also lived in egypt out of egypt have i called my son matthew two fifteen hosea eleven one was spoken of jesus the fifth gospel which is considered non-canonical gave other history of jesus than is contained in the gospels of the new testament there were fifty gospels but only four were accepted as genuine by the priesthood spirit is the highest and supreme development of the soul soul is the material or outer self the mind mind is the action of the soul's powers the body is the physical covering or medium in which the mind acts and functions at death everything but spirit is destroyed and becomes extinct the prophets and holy men always went into the wilderness to pray many of them walked upon mount carmel and communed with god true religion has nothing to do with human imagination god's will is independent of human opinion personal ideas and mere human prejudice are the great obstacles to spiritual growth for instance some difference of opinion arises between two believers in god each expects the lord to support his view of the question the word of god is perfect and arbitrary in its perfection when there is difference of view there is absence of the spirit the word is the only standard of truth discord and disagreement are impossible among those who adhere to the manifestation and sever themselves from human opinion there are no heads in this cause all are servants if all the world should combine to overthrow the covenant it could not succeed abdul baha loves all no matter how they turn away from him whether they love or hate him go or come he never changes in his love for them the blessed perfection has left nothing undone what he ordained can never be set aside everything in life ministers to our development our lesson is to study and learn money and difficulties are alike advantages to us tests are either stumbling blocks or stepping stones just as we make them the prophets of the word could not sin they possess the power and will to violate the will of god but the desire to do so is never present in them knowing the perfect fruit of oneness they have no inclination 
toward that which is imperfect like beautiful flowers they do not change in beauty even when surrounded by foul conditions there are two kinds of suffering one subtle the other gross the subtle suffering is hatred anger fear and torment which follows evil actions of the soul the gross suffering is imprisonment chastisement and physical pain of martyrdom at the time of muhammad he sanctioned war for the preservation of the lives of his followers the laws of individual justice were confused and preliminary in the souls of men therefore the law of general justice of the community was revealed by this prophet he commanded his followers to carry the religion of god by the sword when a man is about to take poison it is right to dash the cup from his hand even with extreme violence it will inflict injury but at the same time save his life there must be a law to prevent the wolves from destroying the lambs at such a period of religious history that is why the shepherd sanctioned such vigorous protection for the sheep behind such laws of a manifestation there is always a supreme wisdom during dinner abdul baha ate entirely with his fingers after a while he said in the east there are many peoples who never use a knife or fork to eat with their fingers is custom among them just as the western nations have their own peculiar customs we must each view with respect the customs of the other there is a kind of food which needs neither knife nor fork and of which everyone may partake with perfect ease and benefit it is the food spiritual this food brings life and stimulation instead of indolence and apathy it brings peace and content to the one who partakes of it the more food the more joy and peace for the spirit is always eager to furnish sustenance to the soul illusion cannot convey what reality teaches christ said what has happened in the past will happen again in the future the reason of this is that all things are under the operation of divine law which is the same today yesterday and forever by this the spiritual eye may discern that which is authentic in the scriptures sow the seeds of love in the heart and not the seeds of hatred the reflection in the glass proves whether we are laughing or frowning by our actions we reveal what is growing in the heart actions are mirrors of the soul these are precious and wonderful days in akka each day is as a year your visit cannot be measured merely by the length of time you have been here the real spiritual visit will be after you have gone some who remain but one day go away filled and enkindled with the spirit of god they are like the dry wood which bursts into flame as soon as it touches the fire so it is with a lamp the oil within it responds instantly to the fire and gives forth light the soul which possesses sight can see in a moment while the blind never see an awakened soul is like a precious pearl in the midst of a load of pebbles which have but little value to some it is given to hear and know the message of life in a short time while others hear and receive nothing even though they make a long stay in this holy place 
we should not be occupied with our failings and weakness but concern ourselves about the will of god so that it may flow through us thereby healing these human infirmities faith is not so much what we believe as what we carry out end of section one section two of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section two in america you have only received a taste of the spiritual food which is to come to you some will arise to serve the cause of god in your land who will sacrifice themselves entirely they will be given great power from god when they come forth to do his will concentrate the soul upon god so that it may become as a fountain pouring out the water of life to a thirsty world live up to the principles of sacrifice the world will then become as nothing and be without power to attract you away from god sacrifice your will to the will of god the kingdom is attained by the one who forgets self everything becomes yours by renunciation of everything a lion wolf and fox went hunting they captured a wild ass a gazelle and a hare the lion said to the wolf divide the spoil the wolf said that is easy the ass for yourself the gazelle for me and the hare for the fox the lion bit off the wolf's head saying you are not a good divider then turning to the fox he said you divide the fox said the ass the gazelle and the hare are yours the lion looking at him said because you have accounted yourself as nothing you may take all the prey the miracles of christ were spiritual teachings not literal what is the greatness in man his spiritual attributes no one can destroy his spiritual qualities they are from god tests are like fire which purifies how will the masses be benefited by this revelation the revelation of baha'u'llah contains all the great laws and principles of social government the basis of god's perfect laws is love for humanity and help for human needs if all people followed this revelation the masses would be immeasurably uplifted and the cause of god glorified this development of humanity will be gradual not sudden it will surely come to pass it is impossible to swim against the current of niagara teaching the truth is like building bridges by which humanity may cross over the current which threatens the world must come to know the word in christ how he was mocked scorned and laughed at yet his mission was to uplift the very world which refused him realization of this will bring tears to the eyes of those who deny him cause them to grow silent and thoughtful christ is always christ what is the best way to benefit humanity guidance to god what is dearer to man than life so therefore leading a soul to eternal life is the greatest blessing and benefit you can bestow upon that soul 
when does our responsibility cease in giving the message when we give the message we develop ourselves our own heart is opened when we teach the heart of the listener the more we give the more we get therefore as this is the means of our own development we should never cease teaching our responsibility remains as long as we have a listener what is the best thing to do when met by a difficult question a sincere worker in the cause of god is always assisted by the divine spirit when such questions arise the truth will flow through you if you stand in the right attitude toward the truth in the spiritual station you will never be without the knowledge necessary to answer a question with spiritual food the capacity to know increases with the will to serve what is sacrifice giving up everything in the cause of god and following his will no matter where it leads we must not have desire for anything else but god we must entirely forget self to be perfected we must give up everything in the cause of god judgment reason will everything to hold back anything is to be imperfect the thing we hold most dear is the thing to give this is real sacrifice upon which finger should the ring with the greatest name be worn the right hand is the hand of honor in the east wearing it upon this hand attracts attention and causes comment but the real place to wear the greatest name is in the heart what is prayer attitude or word prayer is both attitude and word it depends upon the soul condition it is like a song both words and music make the song sometimes the melody will move us sometimes the words what will be the future of this teaching know and realize the greatness of the cause into which you have entered look not at the present the day will come when there will not be a house which does not contain a believer in this revelation one book or tablet of the blessed perfection is more comprehensive than fifty volumes of the world's greatest wisdom the books and words of god have been sealed and the meanings locked all the sacred mysteries were sealed but now baha'u'llah has broken the seals revealed the meanings and we can understand the realities my greatest wish is to teach this message abdul baha said i will pray god to assist you it has often happened that one who is not able to teach would be sent forth and when the time came that one would be found powerful and eloquent one man of this kind in the east has even written a book two jewish children have written a beautiful commentary proving the cause of christ muhammad and the blessed perfection two unbelievers in the center of the covenant have recently returned and are serving with zeal in the vineyard of god belief in this revelation is a priceless spiritual blessing just as a child will give up a jewel of great price for a sugar plum so men will exchange the truth for a treasure of earth the bob said one glance from the eye of he whom god shall manifest is worth all the wealth of the world in this one look we can attain life everlasting resurrection from the dead and the treasures of heaven the revelation of baha'u'llah is not mere history 
it is the voice and will of god if we guard the seed of immortality it will bring forth the tree of eternal life this is the true realization of the manifestations coming his mission is accomplished when we enter the spiritual kingdom and attain immortality god be praised this is the spiritual sight peter perceived christ when thousands of jews saw him not peter reached that station at once this knowledge is the glance from the eye of god it is more precious than all the wealth of the world abdul baha visited us in the afternoon he said speech is necessary and good between soul and soul nothing of this world is eternal the highest longing and ambition of some people is to be a king or queen but at the last even the great ones of earth must perish even the earthly personality of jesus has come and gone only by serving god do we attain everlasting life all our fame and glory should be in service to him this will never perish live in the cause of god this is the harmony of the universe shine in the horizon of his will life is wasted if not spiritual be of the spirit not of the body the light of the body is the eye the eye of conscience stands between the power of knowledge and the spiritual world does your soul feel as sure of god as your eye is sure of nature blessed are the pure in heart they shall see god once i was in prison under the ground and in chains yet i was happy because i was not deprived of spiritual sight i tell you this so that when you hear of my troubles and difficulties in the future you may know that i am spiritually happy i am showing you the way of true happiness by comparing the future with the past you may understand no matter what the future brings forth firmness is the beginning of spiritual happiness christ appeared in palestine and was held in contempt because he was from nazareth only twelve believed in him one deserted him there were other believers but they were not strong they were troubled with doubts and afterward fell away mary magdalene held steadfastly to christ and made others firm god will assist all who are firm in his cause firmness is the beginning of spiritual happiness spirituality is the possession of a good pure heart when the heart is pure the spirit enters and our growth is natural and assured everyone is better informed of the condition of his own soul than the souls of others our responsibility to god increases with our years the government is upon the shoulder of abdul baha he bears a burden of human griefs and troubles yet helps all and is happy for he has cut himself from the world end of section two Section 3 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 3 Love how can we love another whose personality is unpleasant 
see how the enemies of christ persecuted and crucified him yet he loved them all man is like a tree the tree lives to produce fruit the fruit of man is love it is easy for us to love a friend or even an animal but how difficult to love one who is without attraction yet if the love of god is shining in our hearts we like christ may see that love reflected in every personality and love all alike what is the difference between universal and individual love we must love all humanity as the children of god even if they kill us we must die with love for them it is not possible for us to love everybody with a personal love but we must love all humanity alike man is capable of attaining a supreme station through the manifestation of love god created man to attain a supreme station man must reflect the love of god there are many stages or kinds of love in the beginning god through his love created man man is the highest product of his love and the purpose of man's existence is to reflect this love of god in his soul but man in his egotism and love of self turns away from his creator and thereby prevents the accomplishment of the divine plan the manifestations appear to show man the way to god through love by them man is brought to the condition of severance from his egotism and being absorbed into the ocean of love divine the three stages of love are therefore first god's love for man second man's love for self third man's love for god there is a profound a divine wisdom in love the light of god shines in the eyes when the heart is pure the home of religion is the heart soul and spirit compiled from abdul baha's teachings soul is the human will to live temporally spirit is the divine will to live forever salvation is the quickening of soul into spirit all souls are alike in essence or quality as created owing to environment soul needs differ rich and poor wise and ignorant etc environment has its dark side and its light side development has its good aspects and bad aspects sin is the absence of righteousness righteousness is doing the will of god all souls have a free will to choose or refuse the will of god each soul has its station of individuality in which it may develop itself but a soul cannot leave its own station for another station or individuality man accomplishes his true growth when the soul develops in its own station his station does not change simply his capacity for knowing god is increased and developed knowledge of god is the only spiritual development the power of the manifestations of god is beyond question inasmuch as human development invariably follows their teachings this development is unmistakably toward a higher existence every manifestation 
teaches the existence of God. As their power is evident, their knowledge must likewise be true. The soul can prove the existence of God through its intellectual powers, but the true perception of God is through the spiritual eye of the soul. This knowledge transcends mere mental proof. It is spiritual sight. It is vision. The atheist has intelligence of the mere mind. His words denying the existence of God are in reality evidence that God exists. The atheist's real station of development is not ours to judge or estimate spirit is oneness of vision and knowledge the mind has many attributes or powers the spirit is conscious perception when all the powers of the soul work together and are concentrated upon god the soul has its highest employment spirit is like the sun the source of all light alone in its station the mind or soul has many lights as the stars the mind or soul manifests itself throughout the whole body in perfect harmony the spirit or spirit of god manifests itself throughout the whole body of the universe and is in perfect harmony wherever manifest a wicked soul is the only thing out of harmony in the universe. As it does not come into the flow of the divine will, it is not of the spirit. This failure of the soul has led man to believe that God will give the wicked soul another opportunity by allowing it to return in another body and atone for its failure. There is no proof of this outside or inside the holy book of scriptures. Whatever is the destiny of the wicked soul in the hereafter, we know that its development rests with the mercy of God. A wicked soul lacking development is non-existent spiritually, just as in the station of the tree the stone is non-existent because the stone lacks the powers and development of the tree. Therefore, a soul which continues in a condition of non-development through violating the will of God suffers extinction and is spiritually non-existent. The fields and flowers of the spiritual realm are pointed out to us by the manifestations who walk amid their glories. It remains for the soul of man to follow them in these paths of eternal life through the exercise of its own human will. The House of Justice The House of Justice must be obeyed in all things because it has been established by the blessed perfection the council of constantine decided many things wisely but its power and influence did not continue because it was not established by christ himself it was founded upon the words of christ interpreted according to the ideas of men the house of justice will be appointed by the people it must be obeyed because it is the law of god expressed through the people by their own will and voice in this day we are near to the source of true religion and the law of god before revelation has been corrupted by the interpretations of men the true believer is one who follows the manifestation of god in all things after the departure of baha'u'llah we are commanded to obey the house of justice i myself 
will obey the house of justice because it is founded upon the commands of the blessed perfection the council of constantine did not survive because it was not founded by christ but in this day the house of justice has been established by the manifestation of god it is the center of true government and must be obeyed in all things it is the law of god embodied in the people reflecting his will and their need and desire not blindly following command in war both parties are wrong neither japan nor russia is fulfilling the law and will of god the kings and rulers of the world will find their true authority under the rulings of the house of justice the law of god will be vested in nineteen men who will compose the house of justice and render decisions war is never necessary it is always an expense and a calamity never a great help god utilizes even the wars of nations to carry out his ultimate purposes the house of justice will decide between kings and kings all judgment will be from the standpoint of god's laws then rich and poor will be alike justly treated when men are developed spiritually they obey god the rule of the house of justice will be the dominion of the spirit of god human will brings conditions to a climax in the affairs of nations the only solution and remedy is the administration of god's laws end of section three section four of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 4. Heaven. What is meant by heaven in the Bible? Christ said that nothing could ascend into heaven except that which came down from heaven. He also said, I came from heaven and will return to heaven and the son of man is in heaven he said this while still upon the earth and notwithstanding the fact that he had been born of mary there is no doubt christ came from heaven and always was in heaven but when he spoke he did not mean the literal sky what then is meant by heaven science proves that there is no heaven or sky but all is limitless space and one universe in this limitless space the heavenly spheres revolve and have their orbits but the heaven of christ is that invisible world which is beyond the sight and comprehension of mere man it is the spiritual condition therefore the heaven of christ is the will of god the sun of that heaven will never set in it the moon and stars are always shining it is the limitless kingdom of god it is sanctified from all place christ is always there there elijah and the holy prophets live eternally it is sanctified from all comprehension 
the jews were deprived because they could not understand this spiritual condition the heaven of the material world is something else it is the sky overhead in which the clouds move this heaven is up to us and down to those upon the other side of the earth while vice versa their material heaven is down to us in the heavenly book it is said that the stars will fall from heaven where will they fall science proves that nearly all the stars are larger than the earth where will they find room to fall when the heart is pure and filled with the light of the spirit we will know that we are in the true heaven christ came from heaven and still the jews are sleeping the kingdom of heaven is within your soul let all people see that you have the light that they may recognize something in you which they themselves do not possess the manifestation when you give the message of this manifestation many say this is nothing new i prefer the home of my old religious belief which has been so serviceable and trustworthy abdul baha answered baha'u'llah is the same light in a new lamp to see we must look at the light and not at the lamp this is spiritual sight the sun is one orb but it has different rising points on the horizon one point was jesus one moses one baha'u'llah and so on therefore be a lover of the sun and worship it no matter at what point it may arise if you worship the dawning place you will fail to see the sun when it arises in another point of the horizon many stand at the old point and worship while they are losing the light of the sun in this manifestation true lovers of the sun worship the sun itself and not the point of its rising they see and know the light pray for those who stand worshipping the old rising point of the sun spiritually blind to its new appearance upon the heavenly horizon spiritually deprived of its light and bounty the ministers and clergy do not accept the message on account of their position in the church as stars in heaven they have become darkened when the bab arose and declared his mission many of the clergy who had occupied positions found it necessary to give them up and follow his teaching many people likewise who hear the message are deprived of its glory because they receive it from one whom they deem less competent to know than themselves the word of god is revealed according to the degree of spiritual sight no matter who the messenger may be again people do not receive the manifestation of god because they are veiled by their imaginations imagination is one of our greatest powers and a most difficult one to rule imagination is the father of superstition for example two men are dear friends they love each other so much they never wish to be parted yet when one of them dies the other through fear dreads to be alone with the one he cared so much for in life his imagination controls him and fills him with fear and horror we are led astray by imagination even in violation of will and reason it is our test power we are tested 
by our ability to control and subdue it a man imagines he is wealthy some day real wealth comes to him but it is never what he imagined it would be imagination is our greatest misleader we hold to it until it becomes fixed in memory then we hold to it the stronger believing it to be fact it is a great power of the soul but without value unless rightly controlled and guided through imagination men receive a distorted view of a former manifestation and are prevented from recognizing and accepting the truth and reality of the present one they are veiled from the light and glory of god by imagination these veils prevent the true light from entering the soul therefore men follow the false light of their imaginations and cling to error instead of truth thus the egyptians were veiled from the light of god in moses the jews were veiled from the glory of jesus simply because they did not know moses rightly and so were blinded to the one he promised would come after him today jews mohammedans and christians not seeing the former manifestation with true vision are veiled from the glory of god in baha'u'llah one of the greatest veils is literal interpretation of the prophecies again many refuse the manifestation in his day because they do not want to walk the hard road of devotion and servitude but prefer the easy road of hereditary belief misconception of the word of god and its meanings is another great veil which imagination throws over the soul and by which the light is lost also people inherit their belief from parents and ancestors and follow it blindly too negligent to know and see for themselves negligence and apathy are heavy veils of glory read mirza abul fazl's book of baha'i proofs and you will find irresistible evidence of this manifestation will is the center of focus of human understanding we must will to know god just as we must will in order to possess the life he has given us the human will must be subdued and trained into the will of god it is a great power to have a strong will but a greater power to give that will to god the will is what we do the understanding is what we know will and understanding must be one in the cause of god intention brings attainment do the manifestations differ in degree these supreme holy souls are godlike in their attributes the garments in which they appear are different but the attributes are the same in their real intrinsic power they show forth the perfection of god the reality of god in them never varies only the garment in which the primal reality is clothed is different according to the time and place of their appearance and declaration to the world one day it is the garment of abraham then moses then jesus then baha'u'llah knowledge of this oneness is true enlightenment some see the garment only and worship the personality some see the reality and worship in spirit and in truth some of the hebrews admired the embroidered beauty of the garment of abraham but were blind to the real light which shone upon the darkness of the world through him 
Moses was denied, Jesus was denied, crucified. All have been denied and persecuted for this reason. Men see the garment and are blind to the reality, worship the personality and do not know the truth, the light itself. Some worship the tree of life, but do not eat of the blessed fruit of the tree. Therefore differences and disagreements arise in religious belief. If all would eat of the fruit itself, they could never disagree. For instance, four men were traveling along a road. They possessed a franc between them. One was a Turk, the others Persian, Arab, and Greek. They became hungry and wished to buy some grapes. But as they did not understand each other's language, none of them could express his wish to the others. So they began to quarrel and abuse each other. Finally, a man came along who knew all four languages. He asked them what the trouble was. Then he said, Give me the money. I will buy each one what he wishes. So he bought grapes, and they were all satisfied. They had disagreed upon a word or term only. All meant the same thing. Terms are of no importance. The fruits of the tree should be our desire. These are the spiritual grapes. Find the light itself, and there will be no difference of opinion or belief as to the personality or degree of the manifestations of God. The greatest proof of a manifestation is the manifestation himself. We do not have to prove the existence of the sun. The sun is independent of proof. He who has sight can see the sun and prove it for himself. It is not necessary to seek for other proof. For instance, it is a fixed fact that nothing could grow upon the earth without the light of the sun. It is easily proved that without the sun's heat and light no animal life could exist. The sun's light is indispensable, its heat essential. This is the sun's greatest proof. God with all his qualities is independent of all his creatures. Look at the Christ. He was a youth of Israel, not a great and honored man, but born from a poor family. He was so poor that he was born in a manger. Yet he changed the conditions of the whole world. What proof could be greater than this, that he was from God? It is so strong and evident that no one can deny it. Without the light, the world could not grow spiritually. The blessed perfection came from Persia, which is not a prominent nation. The great prophets did not enter school to be taught of men. Yet so many things did they manifest that at last we must admit that the world is not able to destroy the wisdom of the prophets or grow without them. Everything of God is proof against the people and evidence for God. Peter was the greatest of all the disciples. He was the head appointed by Christ. Yet he denied the Christ three times. See what happened afterward. See what a power of penetration the word of God possessed. How the truth in Christ grew and spread all over the world. There must be a standard. The kings of the earth cannot stand against the power of the word. The light of God will shine, must shine. The great flag of Nero was lowered, and Christ's standard raised in its stead. 
all the kings of earth all the learned men have become subject to the word and are its worshippers the blessed perfection during his own lifetime had one thousand followers who believed in him only one proved ungrateful yet he did not deny baha'u'llah many of these followers were martyred with his name upon their lips the renown of jesus name did not reach outside his own country we hear nothing of him from the phoenicians but the name of baha'u'llah reached the whole world while he lived jesus did not write to any of the rulers of the world baha'u'llah sent tablets to all the rulers and kings of the earth when napoleon the third was in the zenith of his power the blessed perfection wrote to him if we should gather together all that the christ said it would be very little in amount but consider the number of tablets and books left by the blessed perfection although the christ was not a great and honored man although he was of such poor and humble condition that he was born in a manger yet he changed the whole world by his power and divinity what proof could be greater than this how can any one deny his proof in the same way the blessed perfection came from persia which is not an important nation of the world he did not go to school and yet so much knowledge was manifest in him that we must confess that it is impossible to deny his wisdom and his divinity so universal were the bounties of the blessed perfection that the very stones and trees mourned his departure everything sent from god is proof enough for the peoples of the world to accept and believe the manifestations of god are sent when most needed there were nineteen letters of the living who accepted the bob the blessed perfection himself spread the bob's message great and learned men likewise embraced his cause they were mullahs or clergy of the mohammedans one of them is known as the king of the martyrs on account of his death for the cause they were celebrated for their great knowledge and learning the manifestation of god is proof of himself just as the sun is its own greatest and sufficient proof the sun says i am proof in the ancient times the women of egypt thought joseph was an angel no proof was necessary but his own beauty and excellence the proof was himself people of sight and perception see at a glance what the blind and incapable can never see another great proof of a manifestation is his power to develop souls miracles are but secondary proofs our first and important duty is to ascertain if the real physician has come to heal the spiritual sickness of the world to learn if the commander of the hosts of righteousness has appeared to prove the appearance of a true manifestation of god if in crossing the ocean everyone on board the ship should assume the authority of captain where would be the safety of the ship and its passengers it would be impossible to reach the destination if everybody was captain then after we have found the captain of the ship of truth it is our duty to obey him submit to his wisdom and be guided by him into eternal life before each manifestation 
a sign appears in both the material and spiritual heavens it is the appearance of a literal star and the rise of a man as a forerunner the forerunner announces the manifestation of the promised one before moses appeared a messenger came to the hebrews bidding them prepare for his manifestation john the baptist came before christ the manifestations are greater or less in degree according to the message they are able to reveal muhammad was preceded by a forerunner or announcer before the manifestation of this day as it is the full reality of revelation there were two heralds ahmad and kazem it will be a long time before the rise of another manifestation the manifestations are like seas some seas such as the caspian are alone and separated from all the others some like the mediterranean are connected with the great body of the ocean itself the manifestation in muhammad was like the caspian alone and separate the bab and the blessed perfection are as the mediterranean and the ocean the manifestations are as suns in the heaven of the divine will sometimes the sun and moon are far apart for instance in the middle of the month they are 180 degrees from each other but in the beginning and end of the lunar month they are only one degree apart in the quran muhammad prophesied that in this day the sun and moon will meet in heaven that is the spiritual sun and moon of this dispensation will rise together in the form of man we should thank god continually that we live in this day of a manifestation of god the manifestation ended with the blessed perfection the cycle of the sun and moon is finished i am nothing but the servant of god some in america are looking for a third christ or personage this is only imagination some call me christ this also is imagination the cycle of the blessed perfection will last for a long time the next manifestation will not be so great as this one when he appears he will not be an independent one do they realize that i make no claim for myself i have sacrificed everything my body my comfort my station all to the blessed perfection baha'u'llah is the consummation of all degrees he is the revelation of all truth and light whereas the revelation of other prophets had to be spread by the sword baha'u'llah commanded that we must be killed rather than kill so he was the consummation of all degrees of revelation which preceded him end of section four Section 5 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 5 spiritual development abdul baha sent for me i found him in a little room opening from the courtyard he was sitting upon a raised chair his beautiful face majestic in repose and strength turned toward the only window he greeted me joyfully 
both the daughters were present he said i want you to carry away from akka the joy and peace of the spiritual life i answered it would be impossible for me to be in this atmosphere of spirit as i have been and not receive wonderful benefit he continued god is like the calm and limitless sea his bounty is overflowing and illimitable in our physical selves we are like the animals yet in some ways the animals are even higher than men they are more restful and composed more trustful and reliant upon the bounty of god more in the flow of his will the birds of mount carmel are his creatures they can fly to the highest branches of the trees and build their nests from the treetops the bird can enjoy the beautiful view of sea and mountain by its power of sight all this beauty exists for us as well the love of god the beauty of god is everywhere and exists for man if he will but rise to spiritual heights open his spiritual vision and behold it is the king free as the bird is free to fly upward the king's head is often heavy with anxiety and the things of this world which hold him down the true pleasure and happiness depend upon the spiritual perception and enjoyment the powers of mind are the bounties of god given to man to lead him towards spiritual happiness the highest grace in man is to love god love of god knowledge of god is the greatest the only real happiness because it is nearness to god this is the kingdom of god to love god is to know him to know him is to enter his kingdom and be near him this is what i desire for you that you may walk in this path i answered now that you have shown me the way i wish to walk in this heavenly path he said you are near to god and day by day you will progress by the knowledge of god towards spiritual joy then you will be a source of guidance to others in you they will now behold another person in fact everybody will witness the change in your life you must develop spiritual love in yourself and in them physical love is very different from spiritual love to awaken spiritual love in others is to attain peace and joy for yourself i said i wish to teach this message of light and truth but i feel that my efforts are small and unimportant he answered the mountain is large but it has no intelligence the diamond is small but it is filled with light the elephant produces no melody the nightingale's song is like the music of heaven i will pray that you may become the recipient of the bounties of god you will be filled with power because the spirit will speak through you you must not bring unhappiness to others in the future sacrifice yourself more and more in the cause of god then the love of god will grow and grow in your heart i told him my regret in leaving the household where everything is in such peace and harmony he said you are always here in spirit you will never be absent now i asked 
what shall i say to those who state that they are satisfied with christianity and do not need this present manifestation he answered let them alone what would they do if a former king had reigned and a new king was now seated upon the throne they must acknowledge the new king or they are not true subjects of the kingdom last year there was a springtime can a man say i do not need a new springtime this year the old springtime is enough for me no the new spring must come to fill the earth with beauty and brightness the sun rose this morning shall we say to the sun go away we do not need you this morning you were here yesterday if we strive to upbuild this cause with faith and love in our hearts it will overpower all the science philosophy and metaphysics of this day i myself am surprised at the wonderful things that are happening the word of god shows such power and penetration that all will be surprised and astonished at its advance i said i will pray to be assisted and strengthened he replied god will help you in this then he continued do everything in your power to help the poor and needy serve god in this way the poor are the trust of god give the message to every listening soul give them whatever they can take of it in persia there was a man who could not read or write yet he was the cause of guidance to many great men in this truth by his pure love of god if you will turn to god he will turn to you and assist you he will make you eloquent he will make you irresistible by his wisdom the tongue speaks from the heart and if you are sincere god will speak for you help and assist others to see this truth as you do be their guide and helper this message is vital to young and old in it the young must make more progress and bring forth more fruit than the old just as young and vigorous trees yield the most fruit to the gardener christ said ye shall know the tree by its fruits meaning whether the fruits be good or bad much or little those who are born of the spirit have all the divine qualities of growth without these qualities they are nothing but mere men and women they are not spiritually alive they are without the power of growth christ said they were dead let all your thoughts be upon this so that the believers and others will know that you have the spiritual spring within your soul and have attained a newness of life this is complete happiness the only peace after a while you will realize that you have been in the presence of the blessed perfection you are always in the presence of god open the windows of your soul so his presence may be within you souls differ in their capacity to receive and manifest the light of the spirit the blessed perfection said there are as many ways to god as the breaths of his human creatures each soul must develop according to its individual capacity peter differed from john paul from barnabas yet all of them were filled with the light of the spirit of christ 
Therefore, it follows that as each soul has its own possibility of development, it is necessary for each soul to stand alone before God. No one can stand for you in the presence of God in the last day. As the soul grows, its capacity increases. Capacity is the measure of development. Love is the evidence of capacity. When we love humanity as God loves us, we have reached the perfect station. Eternal life is then ours, and this mortal world can give us nothing more. Do good each day, if only by speaking a kind word. Knowledge of God is attained through desire and patience. We must knock at the door of truth and seek God with earnestness. Ignorance is as much our natural condition as knowledge is our condition of development. A good conscience is the divinity within us that needs to be awakened and which shapes our eternal destiny. All souls come into this world through the bounty of God and have equal right of development. The soul is affected by its hereditary qualities, but no matter what its condition, it never loses the possibility of being quickened by the fire of the Spirit of God. One brain may work quicker than another. One soul may acquire intelligence easier than another. But the power and presence of the Spirit does not depend upon mental capacity. The disciples of Christ were humble fishermen, while the learned Pharisees failed to see him. The soul or mental intelligence awakes in the mother's womb. Spirit enters when the conscience is quickened and the soul awakes to eternal realities. Jesus said, The true worship is to worship God in spirit and in truth. For such worshippers as these the spirit seeketh. Therefore, as all souls have capacity for enkindlement by the Spirit, and as we all may be assisted by its divine power, we must will to receive it. Some behold in a seed only a hard black substance, while others see in it the life principle, a tree, leaves, and fruit. The true believer in Baha'u'llah brings forth leaves and fruit, proving that the life principle within him has been awakened and quickened. People are not sure of this being the reality and complete truth. It is bound to be true if we see spiritual growth in souls from the blessed perfections planting. Christ spake the parable of the seed. The seed contained the truth. Some of the seed was wasted, he said, and some that grew up was choked by human teachings. For instance, by associating with people who do not believe in God, the growth of the spirit is stopped. When we find believers in this condition, we should strive to get them into different surroundings and under better influences. They need a physician. The most needy are the ones to help first. The poor are always with us, Christ said, meaning those who are without the teachings of the word. They are our charge and responsibility. During the Greek-Turkish war, the condition of the Turkish soldiers was frightful. The people appointed a commission to raise money for their relief. Many contributed for a while, but finally 
nobody but myself gave to help them the soldiers complained that they were receiving less and less assistance the governor replied to them that all they were getting came from the hand of abbas effendi and that all other donations had ceased the soldiers showed no gratitude for what they were receiving but on the contrary complained bitterly against their benefactors just so we cry out to god have mercy upon us when god is the only giver of bounty to us war is a grievous calamity it begins and ends in disaster a mother has a beautiful boy filled with every grace and promise he develops into manhood goes to war and in an instant all his possibilities and usefulness are cut off end of section five section six of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section six return of the spirit in the book of Ikon, we can read the word of god concerning the true reincarnation which is the return of the spiritual qualities in the servants of god in the gospel it is written that they asked john the baptist if he was elijah and that he answered plainly i am not elijah appeared long before jesus when the christ came he was veiled in a cloud from the eyes of the jews a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son clouds and darkness gradually obscure all the former manifestations although they are promised and expected they are refused during their earthly life on account of the spiritual blindness of the people elijah came but was not recognized in john it was not the person or entity of elijah but his perfection and qualities which john embodied the flowers of last year will come again this year we can say they have returned not the actual substance of the former flowers but their color perfume and perfection have returned some are awaiting the coming of christ in the clouds of heaven he has already come in the heart if you believe while those who do not believe in the revelation of baha'u'llah cannot see him on account of clouds and veils many people are going out of the churches dissatisfied with religious teaching it is because they do not see spiritually spiritual relationship at dinner a violent rainstorm swept in from the sea may we all live in the sea of reality and be filled with the love of god thank god we are in the ark of the covenant see what great blessings god has showered upon us how many people of persia looked upon the blessed perfection yet they do not know as you know you have reached this station while they are deprived there are two kinds of relationship physical and spiritual the highest and greatest is the spiritual the physical is of no importance it is very good to possess both in each other 
God be praised. At this table, we are joined in spiritual relationship. We are all of one family because we are under the shadow of the blessed perfection. Look at the earth. Of itself, it is worthless, yet it can reflect the light and heat of the sun. Clouds gather, the rains descend, and the earth becomes fruitful. In the same way, the Spirit of God gives life to the soul of man, and the breeze of God awakens the soul from its sleep. Peter was only a catcher of fishes, yet his attainment was very great. Ananias, the high priest, was much greater in the eyes of the world, yet he was deprived while Peter received the bounty of God. Spiritual relationship is the true familyhood of God's children. The Bulb had many relatives. He particularly wished that his mother should believe in this revelation and attain. Christ said that his mother Mary was not of his relationship, also that those were his brothers and sisters who were in the kingdom of God. Obedience Today we will speak about obedience. The manifestation of God is a perfect example of real obedience. Like Him, we must sacrifice everything. Every plan, every longing and ideal must be given up completely to the will of God. We must look to God for all we desire, all we attain. The will of God must outwork its purposes in us. Our human will must be laid down in sacrifice and love. Abdul Baha has given everything in sacrifice and obedience to the will of God. I am only his servant, nothing more. All our soul powers, our outward self, our inward self, must be consecrated to God in service and sacrifice. Even life must be given if necessary. If we have not reached this station of nothingness, we have not attained to real obedience to the will of God. A pupil must submit entirely to the will of the teacher. This is true sacrifice, true obedience. Real obedience and real sacrifice are identical. Absolute readiness to follow and perform whatever you are called upon to do in the cause of God. When you really love God, you will be willing to sacrifice everything and submit yourself entirely to His will. Consecrate yourself wholly to Him. His will is everything, His service paramount. If they were to burn me, kill or torture me, no matter what affliction may descend upon me, I shall welcome it as one welcomes pleasure. These are precious moments in Akka, so precious we wish they might never end. How is the Baha'i faith progressing in America? After your return, the believers will be in a much stronger and better condition. But this cannot be unless they see and know the will and desire of God. I have no wish but his will. His will is Abdul Baha. If each human creature had his own will and way, spiritual development would be impossible. 
the soldiers in an army are under the will and control of one commander therefore they are united and can press on to victory if each soldier carried out his own inclination and desire there would be just that many different intentions and nothing would be accomplished one thousand soldiers under the control of a commander can overthrow and defeat any number of disorganized troops without a directing will all would be conquered and defeated be sure therefore that if the believers are not united in the will of god they will not be assisted this is especially necessary because all of them are under the tent of the covenant in this revelation there is strength only in unity under one tent there is union and harmony the covenant of god in this day of manifestation is a lifeboat an ark of salvation all true followers of the blessed perfection are sheltered and protected in this ark whoever leaves it trusting in his own will and strength will drown and be destroyed for the blessed perfection left no possibility for discord disagreement and dissension the covenant is like the sea and the believers are as the fishes in the sea if a fish leaves the water it cannot live there is nothing to equal nothing so effective as the covenant of god to bring about and continue unity christ said to peter thou art the rock upon which i will build my church therefore all the disciples followed peter and there was no dissension among them the blessed perfection wrote a testament or covenant with his own pen so that no one who obeys it will deny or disobey god this point is expressed very clearly in the covenant he revealed therefore there can be no possibility no position of disobedience he knew that muhammad ali would disobey the covenant by violating the covenant he has become a fallen branch the covenant was also written by muhammad ali's own hand from dictation of the blessed perfection who knew he would disobey what cause of union could be greater than the covenant god has revealed through his manifestation baha'u'llah many of those who followed muhammad ali are coming back after the departure of baha'u'llah all the beautiful blossoms upon the tree of life were destroyed by muhammad ali and must now be grown again by the love of abdul baha the work and mission of abdul baha is very great no one could express the grief which followed the turning away from the covenant by muhammad ali we should be thankful that the blessed perfection foreseeing this action ordained a center of the covenant through which by allegiance and love we may protect and preserve the revelation of god at the time muhammad ali denied the covenant and occasioned so much grief and suffering the perfect calmness and spiritual strength of the holy leaf were most remarkable the blessed perfection devotedly loved abdul baha and when he appeared his expression would change from gravity to one of great happiness and joy before his ascension the blessed perfection realizing the trouble muhammad ali would bring about would say becheve al gal o oh, to be pitied master end of section six
Section 7 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 7 woman in the baha'i revelation why are women so favored in this revelation women in persia were treated badly in former times by the mohammedans when speaking evil of a man they would say he is just like a woman when they wish to lower a man's pride they would say he is a woman not a man in this day see what great firmness and strength women are showing for god the way to spiritual attainment in this dispensation will be made more and more easy for women for they are more devoted and zealous in this cause than men how many women are higher than men in moral and spiritual development how much more eloquent in the cause of god women are held in great honor in this day in persia a handsome youth of twenty son of a believer was despised and oppressed for announcing his belief in this revelation he was imprisoned his oppressors offered to release him provided he would deny his faith he still remained steadfast saying i will give my life willingly for my belief he came from a very well-known and respected family his mother was asked to speak with him his persecutors thinking her influence might induce him to recant and save his life she told them her words would have no effect upon him except to increase his faith then she was told he would be killed the governor sent him word that if he would renounce his faith his life would be spared still he remained fixed and steadfast his friends pleaded with him begging him for their sakes to change then his mother stood up beside him and kissed him saying do not be shaken do not waver be firm give your life to god say nothing that will deny his cause glorify it by your death if you deny or waver you will no longer be my child she stood beside him as he was beheaded pleading with him to the last that he might not deny the truth in this dispensation the women will progress more rapidly and to a higher station than the men god will assist them Quratul Ain, literally consolation of the eye, was one of the greatest and most heroic women of this truth. She came from a learned family and deeply loved knowledge. If Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, had been a boy and enjoyed greater opportunities, she would have elevated her family and become a mighty pillar in the temple of religion while qurratul ain was visiting her cousin's home she happened to read a pamphlet explaining the mission of the bab she instantly became a believer afterward she was taught by the bab himself and received her name qurratul ain from him some say she was taught in baghdad by the command of the bab she was independent and absolutely fearless upon her return home 
her husband refused to recognize her so she left his house her uncle was killed in a mosque for his bobby faith and for a time she was kept prisoner in his house after being released she went with a number of believers to a celebration outside the city in a grove near a deserted village the blessed perfection was present it was a meeting filled with faith love and rejoicing in speaking to the meeting she became so inspired she removed the cover from her face her mother and some of her relatives were present and her action produced a great commotion among them when the news came to the ears of the mohammedans their charges and persecutions against her became violent and bitter finally she was taken away from her friends and put to death she died a martyr and a heroine in her impassioned speech she had said what god has created pure shall i call impure removing her veil as she said it she spent the night before her execution in prayer her last wish was that she might be strangled instead of decapitated once at a wedding all present left the bride and gathered around qurratul ain she was so eloquent and sincere she knew the blessed perfection before he declared himself to be the manifestation of god in herself she was a revelation to the women of the world if this revelation had produced only one martyr like qurratul ain this would be sufficient proof in the cause of god end of section seven section eight of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section eight mount carmel and syria the history of mount carmel is holy history a spiritual atmosphere surrounds this mountain of god elijah and jesus spent part of their precious lives upon it abdul baha loves mount carmel and has often visited it sometimes staying overnight in caves which overlook the sea in prayer and communion with god syria is the center of the world the extent and variety of its resources its wonderful fertility and natural advantages will make its future history extraordinary its possibilities of development are unlimited it is the focus of interest in world history the site of the old and new jerusalem mount carmel will be a mountain of knowledge peace and protection in the future the vineyard of god we will not live to see this in the body but will view it spiritually. Mount Carmel will some day be covered with great universities and colleges of learning. Then the poor will enjoy the highest advantages from the establishment here of free institutions of education. This is the Holy Land from whence all the prophets and holy men came no country in the world has such a bright light of religion the light of god has always shone upon the world from this land and the religion of god has had its source and revelation here 
it is wonderful even in its physical conformation the phoenicians came from here their great civilizations spread from syria abraham came to this land here his teaching became known the king of salem melchizedek came from this land all the prophets had their missions here the heavenly springtime soon it will be the time of spring already the signs of the flowers may be seen upon the mountains and in the valleys when spring comes there is a divine wisdom in its appearance god has a special object in renewing the earth with its bounty for the dead earth is again made to blossom so that the life of plants and flowers may continue and be reproduced the trees put forth their leaves and are able to bear all kinds of delicious fruits all the birds and animals everything with soul life is rejoiced and rejuvenated in the coming of spring if this does not come to pass it is not spring it may be autumn but it is possible that spring may come and yet a tree rooted in bad ground will be deprived of its vivifying powers or a fruitless tree may not bear although the warm sun and vernal shower are descending upon it so likewise an evil soul may derive no benefit produce no fruit from the coming of a manifestation of god the divine springtime which brings forth spiritual flowers in other souls fails to beautify the soul that is evil in general however just as everything is vivified refreshed and renewed by the bounty of the literal spring so every soul receives some degree of illumination and growth from the manifestation when he comes he is the divine spring which comes after the long winter of death and inaction the wisdom of god is seen in his coming he adorns the soul of man with new life divine attributes and higher spiritual qualities by this the soul is enlightened illumined that which is dark gloomy and forbidding becomes light hopeful and productive of new growth so in the divine springtime the blind receive sight the deaf are made to hear the dumb speak the timid become courageous and the heedless awaken to new realizations in short they have become the image of that which god planned them to be and which the heavenly books promised shall be the true station of man this is the power purpose and virtue of the heavenly springtime faith the question was asked what is real faith faith outwardly means to believe the message a manifestation brings to the world and accept the fulfillment in him of that which the prophets have announced but in reality faith embodies three degrees to confess with the tongue to believe in the heart to give evidence in our actions these three things are essential in true faith the important requirement is the love of god in the heart for instance we say a lamp gives light in reality the oil which burns produces the illumination but the lamp and the chimney are necessary before the light can express itself the love of god is the light the tongue is the chimney or the medium by which that love finds expression it also protects the light likewise 
the members of the body reflect the inner light by their actions so the tongue confesses in speech and the parts of the body confess in their actions the love of god within the soul of the true believer thus it was that peter confessed christ by his tongue and by his actions when the tongue and actions reflect the love of god the real qualities of man are revealed christ said you will know them by their fruits that is by their deeds if a believer shows forth divine qualities we know the true faith is in his heart if we do not find evidence of these qualities if he is selfish or wicked he has not the true kind of faith faith is mentioned in the scriptures as the second birth or everlasting life in this day it is the spirit of god the real true belief many claim to possess the true faith but it is rare and when it exists it cannot be destroyed many are called but few are chosen many believe themselves to be courageous but the battlefield of tests and trials will prove whether they have the real strength to stand firm in persia some believers who claimed to have faith in baha'u'llah fell away when they were tested on the other hand some who thought themselves weak proved to be heroes and martyrs i pray that you who have journeyed from america to visit the holy tomb may become as pure glass through which the light of god may shine be firm be strong we need to be strongly tested in order to prove our faith to ourselves and to the world tests are always surrounding us they are according to the greatness of the cause just as the size of a wave is according to the sea upon which it rises end of section eight Section 9 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 9 The Second Coming what is the second coming of christ in this dispensation abdul baha answered in the book of the zendavesta the zoroastrians are awaiting the coming of two manifestations also in the old testament scriptures there is the promise of elijah and messiah in the gospel of the new testament they are expecting the father and the second coming of christ likewise in the quran the mohammedans have the promise of the imam mahdi and christ in brief all the holy scriptures announce the coming of two manifestations and these two manifestations are the bab and the blessed perfection if you look into the bible it is elias and christ in the quran it is the mahdi and christ these tidings are the same in all the holy books only expressed in different ways two successive manifestations and all the universe is promised these two we must not search for the outer word in elijah and christ but look for the reality the blessed perfection said in his tablets that once he was abraham once moses once jesus once muhammad and once the bab this is explained clearly in the book of Iqan that is the meanings and perfection of qualities 
which were once hidden are now revealed in baha'u'llah therefore we can consider baha'u'llah to be all the prophets no matter by what name he chooses to call himself for all their meanings perfection and qualities are manifest in him baha'u'llah is the center of all their perfections for instance in moses the world received the revelation of material laws in jesus spiritual laws while in baha'u'llah we have received both material and spiritual laws the laws of moses would cover but few pages and the teachings of jesus could be gathered into a small pamphlet the old testament contains nothing but material laws no mention is in it of spiritual laws such as we find in the new testament in the new testament there are no material laws except the laws of divorce and of the sabbath the new testament contains no answers to questions of science but all knowledge has been revealed by the blessed perfection in books which if gathered together would make many volumes he has revealed demonstrations in sciences and he is the epitome of all previous revelations now moses said that after him should come joshua the christ said addressing peter thou art the rock and i will build my temple upon this rock jesus spoke this to peter by word of mouth the blessed perfection did not appoint his successor by statement of tongue but in the book of ad book of the covenant he wrote it with his own hand commanding therein that all the branches and relations should look toward the center of the covenant also in the kitab aqdas revealed thirty years before his ascension it is mentioned in two places during these thirty years these commands of the blessed perfection were known and clearly understood by all again in a tablet he refers specifically to this naming one who would violate his commands this tablet was dictated by the blessed perfection and written at his command by the hand of muhammad ali muhammad ali has made many copies of it therefore we cannot deny what it says if it was not so muhammad ali would be able to deny when he violated the covenant he went out from the shadow of the blessed perfection baha'u'llah also said in this tablet mentioned that if for an instant this one should disobey his commands he would become a fallen branch he mentioned this expressly for muhammad ali knowing that he would disobey and deny he left no possibility for anyone to disobey or misunderstand what he commanded if it were not so muhammad ali could do many things that would injure as it is he has appropriated many papers and tablets written by the blessed perfection it is possible for these writings to be altered as the meanings in persian are greatly changed by a single dot here and there before his ascension the blessed perfection said to me i have given you all the papers he put them in two satchels and sent them to me after his ascension muhammad ali said you had better give me the two satchels to take care of he took them away and never returned them 
he thought the center of the covenant would be helpless without these papers but he did not realize that my strength is the assistance of the blessed perfection if all the world combined against me i would still possess this power and all the world could not take it away from me i can fight with this weapon forever and will always be victorious it is a sword which can never be dulled a magazine that is always filled end of section nine Section 10 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 10 Visit to the Tomb. In the afternoon, we drove to the tomb of the blessed perfection passing out through the narrow gateway of the city and following the road toward the resvan for a short distance then a sharp turn to the left toward the lebanons took us more inland and away from the sea it seemed to be a holiday or festival occasion a great number of people were seen along the roads and highways bright colors prevailed in the peasant costumes natives coming and going in picturesque little groups of twos and threes some of the arab girls were dressed like the boys hardly to be distinguished one from the other they wore wide pantaloons of a very bright colored cotton fabric this costume no doubt being cheaper and requiring less material than the voluminous gowns of the older women we drove on through a village of mud huts built very low and surrounded by a squalor and filth most unpleasant to foreign eyes and nostrils people and animals were living or rather herding under the same roof dogs looking like wolves vigilantly guarded these hovels and savagely attacked visitors here and there upon the filthy ground we saw groups of men sitting and lying intent upon games of cards the women were busily working women and donkeys bear the domestic burdens of the east and shoulder the full quota of suffering altogether these arab villagers were wild almost desperate looking creatures beyond the villages we drove across a beautiful level plain carpeted with red anemones the bahai flower finally we came to the bahji a very large white mansion in which baha'u'llah lived and from which his spirit passed into the supreme concourse the room was pointed out to us as we stopped and looked from the outside we entered the tomb which adjoins bahji the palace of joy flowers were growing abundantly all around the sacred shrine in the center of the building is a court where orange trees and rare plants were growing we removed our shoes at the entrance the passageways surrounding this court were covered with soft and costly persian rugs then we stood at the tomb itself where the blessed perfection sleeps lamps and beautiful vases were placed about the room loving gifts and tokens from baha'i believers in all parts of the world a great slab in the floor marked the place of burial here we knelt and prayed in solemn silence communing with the great and glorified spirit which had ascended from earth to the supreme horizon then we silently withdrew 
to a small side room at the opposite end of the building where some ladies served tea and related experiences of other pilgrims and believers who had visited the tomb upon the anniversary of the blessed perfection's birthday they remain all night at the tomb chanting and praying without intermission and standing throughout the ceremonies during the last few years abdul baha has not been able to attend this holy celebration after receiving flowers from the ladies in attendance we bade them loving good-bye and drove home across the flower-carpeted plain another spiritual visit accomplished another priceless spiritual experience fixed in our memories ahead of us mounted upon donkeys were a number of elder pilgrims and believers also returning from a visit to the tomb as they rode along they looked like the old jewish prophets and the disciples of jesus among them were haydar ali mirza asadullah and eight or nine others of those faithful devoted souls who love god serve humanity and follow the revelation of baha'u'llah we entered the city still silent still wondering still communing with the glorified spirit which shed its light down upon us from the supreme concourse visit to the resvan we went to the resvan with the holy daughters of abdul baha driving through the city and passing out the gates we saw the barracks where abdul baha was once imprisoned then along the roadway bordered by fine trees we went until well away from the city and its distressing pictures the roads now became rough here and there poor-looking houses of the natives to the right we saw the hill tel el fukhar upon which napoleon i planted his batteries and laid siege to akka in seventeen ninety nine unable to overcome it he abandoned the siege saying my fortune has been arrested by a grain of sand were it not for akka i would have conquered the world finally we came to the resvan a beautiful garden filled with palm trees and wonderful flowers the air was redolent of perfume from them a river the nat main runs through the garden in two streams just as the prophecies foretold forming an island upon which an arbor is built high above the arbor tower two great round mulberry trees under the shade of which the blessed perfection loved to sit a fountain was playing in the midst of the garden this heavenly spot is in the midst of a desert-like barrenness an oasis indeed amid dry and hostile conditions of nature and humanity a paradise upon earth a garden of god for here in this beautiful consecrated spot baha'u'llah spent his summers some day the resvan will be visited by pilgrims from all over the world just as the garden of gethsemane is sacred with the memories of jesus christ no one sits in the manifestations chair under the mulberry trees these two wonderful trees were leafless when we saw them for it was january and they are at their best in june everywhere beautiful odd trees were growing oranges lemons and tangerines ripe and waiting to be picked all kinds of flowers violets narcissus heliotropes roses and red anemones greeted the eye in summer 
golden pheasants fly about the resvon ducks and waterfowl swim around in the waters which quiver and glisten in the shadows from the arbor of leaves overhead abul qasim the good old gardener who served the blessed perfection during his lifetime took us into the cottage where that blessed one rested and slept everything there is holy and sacred to his memory his chair in the same place he left it and beautiful tributes of love placed about the room we knelt at the foot of the chair while one of the daughters chanted a prayer then an arab woman with tattoo marks upon her face served tea and mandarins under the single mulberry tree near the cottage we were indeed upon holy ground end of section ten section eleven of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section eleven akka akka is the home of exiles and prisoners of the turkish government a few merchants and bazaars comprise its present meagre commerce although in former times it was an important market for syrian products it is the residence of a governor and various officials the inhabitants generally are poor and wretched evidences of poverty and squalor everywhere haifa has absorbed the business vitality of akka the city looks like a catacomb with the roof lifted up heavy walls a labyrinth of passages narrow streets and dark alleys leading in every direction but the spiritual atmosphere which surrounds us here is unmistakable and uplifting here in this unholy yet holy place we have been taught that the peace power and knowledge of god can only be attained by severance from the things of earth and freedom from the influences of transitory surroundings akka is to us a gateway to heaven in the household we looked again at the faces of the blessed perfection and the bob in the inner room in the blessed perfection is the composite of all the power and love of the universe the eyes seem to scrutinize the very depths of my soul in that face shines the greatness and majesty of all the prophets and heavenly messengers it is the face of a manifestation of god mercy and love surround it like a halo its beauty encircles the whole world the servants of the household give their services willingly so they may be near abdul baha one of them is sakine sultan whose husband was a martyr it was her husband's mother who said what i have given to god i will not take back throwing the head of her decapitated child at her persecutors when they brought her the ghastly trophy sakine sultan and her daughter both serve in the household in love and devotion she said to me may the light of god always descend upon you may your soul be a pure mirror always reflecting god pray for me she is indeed a glorified soul a conqueror through love the ladies of the household showed us how to cook the persian pillow 
they gave us many gifts and presents everything haloed with words of love afternoon before the feast abdul baha came in to see us unexpectedly he said i wish i might be with you always but unfortunately other things claim my time and keep me away from you but my heart is filled with love and the thought of you the important thing is the heart and that is yours that heart may be united with heart spirit with spirit this is the real life the real existence all else is earthly and will pass away but the love which is of the spirit will live forever i wish we might always be together tonight there will be a meeting of the believers here at the table they will be gathered together from all parts of the world this is the reason of my happiness seeing the east and the west joined in the kingdom of god may all the believers in the world be so joined until the whole world shall come under one rule and all nations be as one family this will surely come to pass then turning to mr mcnutt he asked what do you say to this he answered what could i say that would add to an already perfect wisdom abdul baha responded may we all be perfected in the wisdom and light of the blessed perfection again to mr mcnutt will you speak he answered it is a blessed privilege to listen i am usually called upon to speak but i love to listen abdul baha said may you always listen always hear always speak with the power of the spirit at the feast tonight we met abdul baha and a large number of believers from all parts of the east at the feast or supper under the shadow of the blessed perfection as we entered the large hall abdul baha greeted us extending both hands and bidding us welcome welcome his face aglow with light then he helped us to our seats and gave us our napkins as the believers came in abdul baha clasped each one with a loving embrace and gave them their place at the table then he passed around the table anointing each one with adder of rose sometimes upon the cheek again upon the forehead or over the heart some of the believers kissed his hand or touched his garment in loving appreciation as he walked about he spoke beautiful spiritual words this meeting is through the love of the blessed perfection in the sensibility of the heart is this realization god is love may spiritual fragrance refresh thy soul as this perfume refreshes the nostrils the beloved of god have gathered together to partake of material and spiritual food you are in prison here my partners in imprisonment prisoners of love god be praised the food pilau made from persian rice was brought in and abdul baha served each one again speaking heavenly words this is the blessed supper of the lord for we have gathered under the shadow of the blessed perfection we are the lambs of the blessed perfection jesus said to peter lovest thou me feed my lambs christ said i am the living bread 
which came down from heaven he who eats of this bread shall live forever the heavenly books prophesy that they shall come from the east and the west to sit down in the kingdom of god in the last day all the sheep shall be gathered together as he passed around the table serving the brethren he said to tagi manshadi who has a particularly dark face eat plentifully dear brother you are pale with hunger throughout the supper which was very simple in its character and appointment abdul baha was the servant of the believers this was indeed a spiritual feast where love reigned the whole atmosphere was love joy and peace sometimes when american believers are not present at this feast their places are left vacant in loving memory after the rice and oranges mirza asadullah introduced mr mcnutt saying he is one of our eloquent american brothers who has great power god has given him the power to attract the souls to the fountain of life his words are like a magnet in the midst of his work he has come to visit akka we have not been brought into this blessed brotherhood of the east and west through miracles but through the word of the manifestation of god baha'u'llah through his word the prophecy of christ has been fulfilled that they should come from the east and the west to sit down at the table of the lord jesus said that the coming of the son of man would be as the flash of lightning from the east to the west all the proofs are confirmed here tonight mr mcnutt said my spiritual brothers in al abha the persian language always seemed difficult to me until i visited the holy household now i find it very easy to understand for the persian alphabet contains but four letters and the persian language has only one word these letters are m h b and t and the word is mahabbat which means love for love is the sum total of the persian language as i hear it spoken in akka that is why i am able to understand and speak persian so quickly the blessed perfection in the kitab -e aqdas recommended that the nations of the earth should adopt one language this was the outer language of unity at the same time he revealed the divine message of unity in the inner language of the spirit this inner language is understood by his children in the east and the west when the east and west meet in the kingdom and commune in this inner language the putting together of mere words is an easy matter if men love each other all the details of unity can be quickly settled upon business would become a part of religion and commerce would be filled with the spirit of god if love reigned in men's hearts religion underlies the laws of nations if we love each other the most great peace which baha'u'llah promised will come in our hearts and so spread throughout the world love is the foundation of all unity for god himself is love races will blend together when the will of man becomes the will of god the various religious systems are coming closer together baha'u'llah stands at the meeting of their ways to god in him the mohammedans are going forward to meet their promised imam mahdi the christians to meet christ the jews their messiah and so on when they meet baha'u'llah they meet each other as at the top of a mountain there they find unity because there they find him there is the widest view the heavenly horizon 
no one but a manifestation of god can unify the religious systems of the world no law no war no power of kings could do this the kingdom is a real visible kingdom a real unity this cannot be attained from books it comes from the heart in these bahai faces one can see the image of the blessed perfection he is here i will take back this picture to the american believers their spirits are here with us at this table of love the atmosphere is love the soul of abdul baha is among us the glorified spirit of the blessed perfection looks down from the supreme concourse allahu abha mirza asadullah said that the rice pudding we had for dessert was the same kind which some mohammedans believe muhammad ate with god when he visited heaven asadullah recalled the difficulty he experienced in speaking through an interpreter when he visited america after the speaking was over a bahai from persia chanted a tablet his voice vibrated throughout the hall like the tones of a clear bell this was indeed a spiritual east where love reigned and joy predominated the next morning we were with abdul baha at breakfast greetings he said how are you in english then he spoke of the feast saying i have been taught the lesson of servitude and sacrifice in these meetings where the believers come together in spiritual joy and fragrance my heart is touched with pity as i look upon the discord and lack of unity among men but when the people of god the children of the kingdom meet together we find the true peace the real unity and the love of god manifest mrs mcnutt mentioned the three progressive spiritual steps obedience as christ taught resignation as muhammad taught and renunciation as revealed by baha'u'llah abdul baha said i pray that you all may be assisted to attain these stations in the cause of god he continued the cause of my happiness is meeting you here and seeing your faces filled with the light of god i shall never forget the beautiful meeting last night you must meet together in this way in america be true loyal servants of god arise to serve his cause these are divine meetings and the bounties which surround the kingdom of heaven will descend upon you the same spirit of love and life which fills the supreme concourse will fill your meetings this is a time of trouble and testing to all the believers then one of the daughters chanted a tablet most beautifully the chant was rhythmic yet without form in the melody seeming to follow the words and adapt itself to their expression end of section eleven section twelve of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section twelve heavenly sustenance god has favored us by bringing us together again at his table may his mercy and bounty make night as day 
and make the day everlasting for night and day are according to the motions of the earth but in relation to the sun day and night do not exist to the sun day is everlasting if we could ascend to its station in the heavens there would be no night because there would be no horizon the earthly things have an existence though they must perish all creatures have this same existence all created things must die the wise man sees them as perished but that which belongs to the divine kingdom of heaven is everlasting the souls of those who are awake and mindful will take heed unto this and turn to the everlasting kingdom before it is too late the outward and perishable is but the sign of the inward and imperishable how many celebrated people have come and gone since christ lived how many kings and princes famous men and men considered wonderful for their learning have arisen and passed away no sign of them remains no result therefore no existence but those humble meek and unimportant men who partook of the cup of christ's teachings shine forever in the spiritual horizon although they were looked upon as having no knowledge that which is of the divine kingdom is everlasting that which belongs to the kingdom of the world will fade away and perish the word of god is love it has gathered us together to partake of material and spiritual food he then asked if we were happy speaking to the servant of the household he said why do you bring them food they do not partake of it i answered we are so filled with heavenly food that other food is not necessary then he continued many of the people are heedless of this great day we are the blessed ones who know and are acquainted with its wonderful significances why are they sleeping while you have been awakened you have attained while they are deprived because they will not see the reason of this is mentioned in the bible many are called but few are chosen this is from the bounty of god his mercy has descended upon us although we are not worthy from badiullah badiullah came in during the afternoon at first he seemed somewhat self-conscious but in a little while the power came over him and the light shone in his face then he forgot self and spoke with fervor and eloquence his theme was love and severance he said cut yourself from the perishable things of this world there is a beautiful persian story which tells of the love of majnoon and Laili. it is mentioned by baha'u'llah in the tablet of the seven valleys majnoon was seen searching everywhere for Laili after she had passed into the spirit world the lover although he knew his search was hopeless continued to seek his beloved even by sifting sand through his fingers proving his devotion and worship the story of this love teaches us that there is a deep hidden wisdom in our trials and disappointments for they prove 
the quality of our love and devotion to god like majnoon we must seek him everywhere we must seek him continually while seeking for his beloved one dark night majnoon was seen and pursued by a patrol just as he was about being taken prisoner majnoon climbed over a high wall and jumped down into a garden falling at the feet of his beloved Laili, who happened to be searching with a candle for a lost ring when he found himself in her presence he forgot his fears offered a prayer of thanksgiving and asked god to bless the patrol who had pursued him so it is in our search for god at first everything seems difficult trials and oppositions beset us on every side but when we find him in our love and confidence we thank him for all the difficulties and troubles we pass through our faith and peace have been perfected by our search for him our enjoyment of his love is so much greater for the obstacles which have beset us on the way the prophets and messengers of god live their lives through storms of oppression and tempests of hatred and suffering they are despised and rejected imprisoned tortured and martyred if they did not love god and know to what a paradise of love this road of thorns was leading them they could not go on to the end the soul is like gold which must be tried in the fire and in the crucible before it is perfected and purified in the crucible of his love all the base metal all the alloy is burned away and disappears leaving only that which is precious and proof against all tests outside the soul are innumerable barriers numberless enemies and hostile pursuers by the mercy of god we have been permitted to surmount these walls escape from these pursuers and fall at the feet of our beloved having found him and his love we must be like our beloved and love one another even blessing our enemies and those who have persecuted us all the light and love you have received in akka will illumine and uplift other souls in america if you love them in our actions we reveal what the tongue cannot speak this is like putting a candle in a dark place so that the light may reach many eyes and guide many souls the real light of the soul shines forth to the world in our actions the most important message for us to deliver to the world is the message of love through love we form companionship and by uniting in spiritual companionship we attain power when this magic circle of love unity and power is established our influence widens and the number of our friends will increase the reality of love is to love others better than we love ourselves to excel one another in service to do this all ill feeling must be taken out of the heart we must remove ill feeling entirely from our dispositions the blessed perfection said in one of his tablets that if he knew he had been the cause of sadness to any soul during the day he could not sleep until all that sadness had been taken away by love if this love and companionship do not exist our meeting together in the cause of god is impossible and fruitless for without unity there is no accomplishment god has said because i love thee therefore i created thee the elements have been attracted toward each other coerced as it were through affinity for each other therefore in their mingling we witness growth and being the existence of the physical and mental kingdom is through the cohesion of these atoms and this makes the life of the spiritual kingdom possible for the spirit although not of these atoms can only manifest itself 
in the mental and physical and it is by the life of the spirit in us that the eternal life of god is transmitted to humanity why do we baha'is love one another because god wishes us to love the creatures of god so that his purpose may be accomplished in them and in us then we are the lover and humanity is the beloved majnun and Laili could not be mated because they belonged to opposite and hostile tribes just as romeo and juliet came from different families which bitterly hated each other finally the love of majnun grew so strong that he wandered away into the wilderness where a dog crossed his path weeping he stopped and caressed the creature for it had once belonged to Laili. If the earthly love was so strong in Majnun, how much stronger should our spiritual love be for each other? In everything we must strive to find God. Our love for Abdu'l-Bahá must bring peace, harmony, and goodwill everywhere among ourselves. The foundation of all existence is love and the foundation of love is god what would there be in this world without love the blessed perfection said the reason i have suffered all these tribulations is that love should be established among the friends of god they asked majnun why do you love the earth because it is dark like Laili, he replied the lover of an earthly beloved is most unhappy and yet most interesting to us simply because he loves in the seven valleys the blessed perfection shows that some lovers of god must slowly traverse all seven stages of the road toward the eternal beloved while others attain in one bound in one step love is the true self of the soul for god himself is love the sign of a true lover is that his heart must be in perfect accord with his actions or rather that his actions must speak the secrets of his heart events show that muhammad ali has followed his own will and not the will of the blessed perfection a true seeker must seek for the reality may the power of god grow so strong within you that the world will become aflame with your words and all the people be enkindled with the fire of the love of god what the blessed perfection has desired and announced will surely come to pass when love is established in human hearts war will cease and swords be made into plowshares then will peace reign over all nations and kingdoms question asked badiullah was there communication between the bab and baha'u'llah he answered before the bab was martyred he directed that a large box of books and writings be sent to baha'u'llah this was less than a year before his death at the age of twenty-five he declared himself to be the door or gate to he whom god will make manifest he announced himself to be the mediator between this promised one and the people of the world it is said that for a short time they were together but this statement is without authority i never heard baha'u'llah say that he had seen the bab it is not historically established that they met but the sending of the box is a fact of history there were many writings of the bab in this box treatises upon the quran etc also a paper entitled conjugations in the name of abha in which baha'u'llah is mentioned kabbalistically and otherwise three hundred and sixty times the purpose of this was to announce the hidden one the manifest one 
to the people and prepare them for his appearance baha means glorious light or effulgent splendor the bab knew this was to be his name when he appeared he also knew and announced the year of the manifestation of baha'u'llah who first declared himself near baghdad thereupon the name baha'u'llah descended upon him end of section twelve section thirteen of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section thirteen from the mother of the household she said i regret indeed that i cannot speak your language you also feel your need of persian persian is most important in this day as it is the language of the word we will understand each other perfectly in the spiritual world a tradition of muhammad says blessed is the one who sleeps one night in akka he also said they who rest in akka shall be honored even though they know it not again blessed is the one who has seen the one who is in akka the eyes of the mohammedans in akka are spiritually closed then she read to us in persian from the tablet of ishraqat she continued the house of justice will be established men will watch over this house day and night the people will come to it for protection they must obey its laws and be attentive to its commands it will be the sun of wisdom which will distribute light to the politics of the whole world the people of wealth honor and power must turn to religion as the evident light and firm fortress of humanity our duty is to be kind to everybody and avoid wrongdoing the light of the world is religion without it we live in darkness the blessed perfection commanded all the people of the world to establish peace the kings of the world must unite they are the dawning places and rising places of the will of god to assist them we must strive to obey the laws of god the wisdom of god is revealed in two lights the sun and the moon just as in the material world one the moon is the consolation or the mercy to the world the other the sun is the foundation upon which the world must build what shall be our reward and punishment we ask the victorious armies of god are made up of good deeds and actions these are the soldiers of his army the commander of the army is righteousness and guidance toward god the true helper the king must know his subjects and reward or punish them according to their merits so those who are dishonest servants may not receive what the good are rightly entitled to so it is with those who come to akka when the blessed perfection was six years of age he had a vision he saw himself fall into the sea in the water his long hair became shining like the sun and spread out around him like a golden net all the fishes large and small came swimming toward him holding to the strands of his hair 
the fishes came closer and closer following him as he swam through the waters which were shining like the sun the fishes were countless in number when he awoke he told his vision to his father who was an important man of persia his father consulted a wise man named abdul karim who interpreted visions for the kings abdul karim said your son will be a great man the water is knowledge and the fishes swimming about him are the people of all nations who will come to be taught by his wisdom he will be forced away and separated from earthly things and will reflect the light of the word of god give the message whenever you are called even if it be in china abdul baha has often prayed that his conditions might become more severe in order that his strength to meet them might be increased this blessing has always followed his prayer in prayer we must seek for strength to meet conditions the garment with which god will clothe you when you teach will be an armor of protection against all assault the teachers in this cause will be as planets in the heavens illuminating the great world of the west teaching is the crown of action this was the crown jesus bestowed upon his disciples the blessed perfection said when the sun of my beauty has set be not disturbed nor troubled for i will see you from the highest horizon and help those who arise in my cause all existence is in conformity with divine law this law is and must be universal it is a natural order and there can be no deviation in its action man must conform to divine law that which is at variance with the truth and reality of god cannot stand against the action of divine will or law the law of god which punishes and destroys is at the same time eternal life to those who obey it it is necessary for the soul to prove the message and reach a station of belief through its own power of judgment few can see at once when the soul is firm and steadfast in its faith it instantly reflects the light are many firm in america even the greatest are sometimes weak peter for instance the bob was a supremely holy soul he went to school at the age of six his teacher confessed that he could not teach him saying he knows more than i do the same teacher was one of the bob's most devoted followers and was afterward martyred end of section thirteen section fourteen of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section fourteen talks from mirza asadullah persian is the language of the word because baha'u'llah revealed himself in it god be praised that you have come to akka mr m is a teacher it is well that he has come to abdul baha as a pupil he should come to learn how abdul baha teaches this revelation is like beautiful writing which the teacher sets forth as an example for the devoted pupils to copy it is from god all who teach must come to learn in order that they may give forth truth to others christ's teaching 
came forth after his ascension he was the example by washing the feet of his disciples he taught them the lesson of servitude and love he set forth his qualities and they followed him every day of your stay in akka will be as a year this will be evident to you after you have returned to america here asadullah remained silent not speaking for a long time then we asked him to talk he said it is not difficult for me to talk that is my work why is it so because i look upon the universe for my knowledge whereas the teaching of science and philosophy are from books and books are faulty the whole world is my book therefore it is no trouble for me to talk for i simply speak of what i see in this great volume it would tire my eyes to read the books of science weary my brain to repeat and remember all they say when i read the book of the universe i read the essence of all books all the prophets of god read this book and were taught in this way those who love true knowledge know in this manner when a prophet appeared bringing a new message of truth he was considered crazy the prophets are able to speak from different standpoints because their knowledge is from god and not from books where are the books of men they perish and are destroyed the book of god is everlasting imperishable messages from god are as points of beginning they are sources of light and knowledge in the persian alphabet you will find points or dots which change and form the letters these letters form words the words make sentences and the sentences express thoughts for instance beginning with the letter aleph or a then aleph bay or ob and so on by addition of other letters and words until the meaning is conveyed in the first point in aleph the meaning was hidden waiting to be revealed the meaning was not opened until the book and its sentences were formed with aleph as a source or first point so it is with the seed and flower the flower is in the seed and comes from it at maturity thus words gather together make a chapter and the chapters form a book the prophets from the point of oneness with god composed a holy book the world is a book it proceeds from the point of oneness the bob said i am the point of the book of the world all things are good if we see aright a flower is beautiful we desire to smell it and possess it when we see something ugly we wish to get away from it once we possess something good it is always beautiful therefore truth and righteousness are forever beautiful the prophets came into the world as living examples so the people might acquire their good qualities and perfections the resvan is not in its full beauty at this season of the year but when its flowers are in bloom when you breathe their many and varied fragrances which fill the air in summer when you look upon their lovely glorious faces you are made happy all your senses are delighted your nostrils are saluted by the heavenly odors your eyes are greeted by matchless colors you taste delicious fruits you hear the sweet song of the birds all this beauty is for your benefit intended to make you happy then why not praise god for the beauty of the garden in which everything praises god but if you go to another place which does not contain these beauties you wish to hurry away immediately for instance a swamp 
infested with gnats and mosquitoes this is only natural thus it is with the people of god who show forth the beauty and graces of god in their attitude toward humanity we long to be with them we love the beauty of their good qualities they refresh our spiritual senses we are filled with their beauty they are the flowers and fruits in the garden of abha in the resvan of the blessed perfection now i will tell you something about an orange it will encourage you as a teacher in this truth for each one you teach will be the means of leading twenty others into the same pure light out of one seed by planting you may produce one thousand oranges the outcome increasing in greater and greater proportion so it is with the word of god a teacher drops a seed the one he teaches teaches another and in the end the outcome of your planting will be one thousand believers if this increase is certain in the vegetable kingdom how much higher and greater the result in the kingdom of men just as the description of akka by one who has lived here is different from your own impressions as you drive through these streets and actually see for yourself so it is with the real disciples of abdul baha without knowing the question asked him i gather from what he says the attitude of the seeker his words cover every phase of a question a perfect discourse must meet and fill everybody's requirements to teach aright one must wander through the wilderness of human ideas as i have done then you will learn the secret of teaching by meeting all sorts of people and discussing and answering every kind of question no one loves to teach more than i do with my own tongue but the truth and reality of interpretation must be given according to the form of abdul baha's teaching the one desire of a teacher should be to reflect the truth as a mirror on the face of the listener the teacher should see what is needed and desired so that he may give forth that which will confirm strengthen and develop the one taught that is to say there is a key of knowledge which will unlock any door and enable us to enter with the message of truth this may sound difficult but it is easy to prove if you possess it you must lead the seeker into the right road then progress is straight ahead in chicago i taught many ladies i will now give you a beautiful lesson for you are a comparatively new believer a new child in the kingdom of al abha human hearts are like mirrors and their light is the knowledge of god if the light should be dim the mirror cannot reflect the knowledge of god but the light of god is never dim we can always depend upon its standard purity and power depend upon the light and it will always increase in power and illumination to you the great need is to keep the mirror polished and clean and its face always turned toward the light when the mirror is pure you will have perfect knowledge full power and true light the more faith one has in the heart the more the mirror is kept turned toward god and the more fixed the soul becomes upon god the greater the firmness the greater the understanding then the greater the peace and so on if you do not grow after you see the light shining from your words it is your own neglect and failure the spirit of man is the cradle of the lord in it 
there comes the new birth the new being which is to live forever if you teach but a few souls you have attained to spiritual greatness from each one you will gain a hundred spiritual children you are in the kingdom gratitude and love will guide them to you you will be like a lamp the souls you have illumined have been lighted from your flame you will be the focus of the rays the center from which they come christ taught peter peter planted the seed and a thousand souls arose in the kingdom of christ the blessed perfection would teach one soul and from that one a multitude would be raised up when the heart is pure it will be guided and directed in the truth and power to teach will be given to you End of section 14section 15 of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by nicholas james bridgewater ten days in the light of akka by julia m grundy section 15 sometimes in america i had no one to translate for me to speak in the language of love we must have an instrument through which that love may manifest itself love lives in the heart even if one tries to hide it and is unwilling to speak it forth love in the heart becomes evident and speaks in our actions for instance suppose i have a strong desire to perform some action can i do it without the hand to carry out my desire it is through actions that qualities and attributes express themselves the rose is revealed through its color perfume and outer beauty knowledge is our greatest possession but we cannot give it to others without speech or writing if we do not express it in this way it remains hidden and unrevealed take for instance a quality like mercy or generosity if we do not use the tongue and bring forth these attributes they are hidden concealed therefore all the human and divine qualities become visible through the powers god has given to man and through the powers god himself possesses the tongue the eyes the ears are necessary to perfect man and enable him to express reality god created man with the intention that man should perfect his powers if we did not possess these qualities and the powers to express them we could not reflect the work of god god has said through his manifestation i have created man and through man my likeness is revealed man can therefore attain a very high station by reflecting the attributes of god this power of expression is the spirit independence is man's greatest gift the knowledge of good and evil makes us responsible otherwise we would be as the angels who are messengers of divine purpose so it came to pass that man was made of the dust and from the earth he should appear and be developed into a high station this is reflected everywhere in creation the eyes ears all the body of man evidence this high purpose a child's knowledge does not depend upon the size of a child but upon the capacity of its mind a mountain is very large but it does not possess understanding a bird is small by comparison yet it has life and the power of flight which the mountain has not do not look at your own inability and shortcomings when you wish to teach this truth look at the power and bounty of god which are limitless 
when man looks at himself the view is hopeless because he sees no ability and capacity in himself alone but when he looks at the bounty of god he is encouraged strengthened and feels that nothing is too great for his accomplishment the birds which fly above mount carmel can reach the upper regions of the atmosphere inhale the breezes of life and view the beauty which the creatures below cannot enjoy these are the relative positions of the manifestations of god and humanity all the fields of the earth with their grains and seed are for the sustenance of the bird wherein he gains his food without sowing or planting these things are provided by god in the same way man has reasonable sustenance and pleasure for god's bounties of love are in man god wishes that man should enjoy these bounties but while doing so fly into the upper regions of the spirit there is one standard one who is perfect one the manifestation of god he is infallible others are not absolute obedience to him is necessary the judgment of god is in his manifestation the soul must be as a perfect reed so that the breath of the spirit may blow through it pure and free truth is like a lake of pure living water our thirst for it should be conscious of nothing but the water the greatness of a man depends upon his soul development upon his drinking from the waters of truth the manifestation the blessed perfection is a lake he is truth the earth said to the sea i am more excellent than you the sea replied in what respect art thou more excellent the earth answered because the blessed perfection lived and walked upon me who can understand this none but those in whom the eye of the spirit is opened in a tablet baha'u'llah says that he understood the language of the waves trees birds and all living things how much happier are we who understand the blessed perfection than those who do not he knew the secrets of all living things looked within their mysteries and perfections in the day of the resurrection all of the prophets speak and this is the language of the spirit only those who are awakened by the divine trumpet can hear and understand to those who are not awakened there is no resurrection when we go to sleep we close our windows and relapse into unconsciousness the morning brings a new day we awaken return to consciousness and open our windows then the light and illumination enter when a man is really asleep and his soul inactive we may say the tenant of the house is not occupying the house and that the soul is not living there but an active soul is awake and occupying its house the universe is a vast house and he who lives in it is god before the appearance of the blessed perfection it was as if the owner of the universe was asleep when baha'u'llah came he opened the windows of the universal spirit a new day dawned and light poured down upon us from heaven all things reflected this new light of the morning arts sciences and all human intelligence were filled with new illumination the power of the sun produced new life everywhere the earth thus awakened was vivified and filled with new energy this is the light which appears in the human lamp at the time of the coming of a manifestation progress 
development and civilization must inevitably follow just as all mankind receives benefit from a new invention or discovery that is to say all the world is awakened when he awakes when a man is asleep everything in his room rests and sleeps they awake with him many people of the world have been awakened by the new daylight but they do not know from whence it came nor can they tell you what they are in search of they simply know that a light has come and disturbed their slumber so they are filled with uncertainty and unhappiness while seeking when they meet the light of the new day of god it is like a man having thoughts and hearing statements he does not understand the meaning of you from america have been awakened by the new day you have heard the call of god you are alive and the spirit vibrates within you to give you a more homely illustration when dinner is served all in the house will gather in one room to partake of and enjoy the food a bell is rung to summon us the voice of baha'u'llah is the bell in the center of the universe sounding the divine call to the heavenly table where the feast is spread knowledge of these things is like collecting precious stones after you have secured them do not throw them away but preserve them in your heavenly crown end of section fifteen section sixteen of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 16. Do the manifestations retain their individuality in the next world? Man is composed of three elemental conditions the physical, the mental or rational, and the spiritual or potential the physical begins and ends here the mental or rational begins here and in our true development it has no ending the spiritual or potential depends upon our will to know god when we become quickened with the knowledge of the will of god we can say we have always existed and will never cease to exist because his will is from everlasting to everlasting these three conditions of man are from the bounty of god and his gift all life is from the word which is from the manifestation of his will spirit is born and unifies with spirit by the power of the word spirit is the perfected man and is eternal the manifestations are spirit christ is in moses all the manifestations have their own mental identity but all are one in the spiritual therefore as the mental in man's true development has no ending and as the spiritual which is the will of god is eternal the identity of the manifestations must continue in the supreme horizon they exist in their own stations forever and eternal the blessed perfection may be likened to a lamp which illuminates the universe for instance suppose three people are in a room each seeking an answer to a different question although these questions involve different points the light of the blessed perfection will illumine all of them and reveal the answers so from him we enjoy the fruit which ripens and grows because the rain has come down upon the earth therefore we see by the light which shines from the mirror of the blessed perfection he reflects the light to the soul and the soul forthwith has vision through him also 
we grow to understand each other and to know what is in the minds around us all souls have some oil which will produce illumination all souls will bear fruit we must strive to understand them and recognize what they possess by studying the word of god and teaching it we will develop this power of penetrating other souls abdul baha does not ask questions each one of us in his presence may have a different thought or idea upon the subject he is explaining but before he finishes all our ideas will be met all our questions answered when a soul displays evil qualities we are depressed disappointed and wish to turn away immediately on the other hand we seek to associate with one who manifests good qualities the coming of the blessed perfection was to teach us to absorb his knowledge and show forth his bounty in order that we may be joined together in unity and love by becoming like him his word is unity his perfection is oneness this is our goal this is our standard of perfect attainment the blessed perfection revealed a tablet in which it is said a wicked man asked what is paradise we answered paradise is where i live hell is where you abide amid disease and horror the effect of a manifestation is to drive out all that is evil in the soul and replace the natural growth of virtues just as jesus went about casting out devils an evil soul is like a stony field in which the seeds of beautiful flowers have been planted but no growth has followed god created man perfect in powers and possibilities therefore by reflecting the good qualities of god the soul will witness this heavenly growth in itself and find rest and peace in the knowledge of his will concerning us a good man manifests the qualities of heaven a bad man those of hell heaven is upon the earth because these good qualities are witnessed here and now in our lives heaven is not above us overhead the condition of perfect happiness is found when we are beside abdul baha there you are in heaven when the heart is pure you cannot help being happy a good soul is like a beautiful rose not only do you enjoy its beauty but inhale its fragrance and are delighted with every good quality it manifests in each word of god there are many meanings many interpretations these interpretations vary according to the spiritual vision of the teacher the interpretation of abdul baha is always the greatest and most complete why because his knowledge has descended from the invisible source of knowledge and the holy spirit is speaking through him therefore he has all the meanings when a teacher wishes to explain the word of god he does not confine himself to one kind of demonstration but uses many according to the capacity of the listener the interpretation of abdul baha is always the true form and the best example to follow he often gives us a spiritual meaning and then follows with a material one showing the harmony which exists in the application of the truth of god for instance we go into a factory one goes this way and another that way among the machinery and when we come out we have various explanations and viewpoints to describe what we have seen again for instance in the seed there are many potentialities hidden and we may speak of whichever one we please the rain and sunshine produce many beautiful colors and fragrances in flowers so the teachings of god and the love of god produce spiritual flowers of all kinds within us according to our potentialities the eye sees the rose the nose smells its fragrance there are many ways of sensing the same object 
similarly we can spiritually enjoy the beauty and fragrance of the heavenly growth in our own souls and in the souls of others the senses act in harmony all wishing to express to us in their own way and language the beauty of the rose everything has speech everything has a language of eloquence and expression i come into your room you greet me by word and look i read the same greeting in this vase of flowers upon your table my ears listen to the greeting my eyes witness it my nose inhales it the tongue explains the real speaker is the tongue for when i enter the room i have something beautiful to tell you something the ears never listened to before man is the real tongue of the universe intended by the creator to express god and set forth his beauty and love the blessed perfection embodied all the language of existence all the knowledge was poured into that one cup from which abdul baha drank the prophets of god had veiled this knowledge sealed the wine of inner significances abdul baha drained the cup we must drink from his teachings the blessed perfection said that the ocean spoke in its own language saying o god o god my beloved the blessed perfection understood the language of the ocean he heard heaven and earth telling the glory of god to know as he knew we must understand this language of the spirit the prophets knowing it were able to speak to all people in their own language no matter if jews mohammedans or christians mirza asadullah came to see us again in the afternoon we mentioned the red anemone which carpets the mountains and fields of palestine at this season of the year he said little by little the flowers will be coming the red anemone called shakoyek and pronounced shakoyek by the persians is the forerunner of spring the lebanons east of akka where the blessed perfection frequently walked are covered with these beautiful crimson-hearted flowers end of section sixteen section seventeen of ten days in the light of akka this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 17. The more you see of Abdul Baha, the more you will realize the inexhaustible fountain of knowledge within him. He is the bazaar of God, where everything humanity needs may be found without money and without price in him there is always something new to learn and possess always some new thought in his words and explanations what you receive from him is measured by your capacity the possessions of god are limitless whereas man's possessions are limited even though they be vast and many in number so man must always fall back upon human treasures which are old and mostly worn out creation never repeats itself truth is one yet its expressions are innumerable and no two things are alike in the kingdom of god the prophets are representations or manifestations of truth truth is fixed unalterable whereas everything human is changing and unstable from death to life and from life to death man comes man goes never fixed never permanent human life is a point in a circle if you whirl a burning stick around it makes a circle of fire 
Man is a point in the circle of life. He always comes back to the starting point in a process which is perpetual. Every day he is born anew. Every day he dies. The past never returns. The future comes toward us inevitably. Childhood cannot continue. Youth cannot be ours again. The law of time is inexorable. With God there is but one reality. There is but one primal truth. Teachings may differ, but the meaning remains fixed, everlasting. The prophets renew the word of God, which has been defiled by human interpretation. God has a new splendor every day. We see evidence of this in Abdul Baha. No one can understand the real essence of truth. When we look at a rose, we can understand its form and color, but cannot penetrate the essence of truth, which lies back of its creation. Who can surround and know God? This is a proof that the prophets cannot be known in their fullness and completeness, for they come to express God to us. How can a human mind encircle God and his knowledge? When we look into a mirror, we see only a part or representation of the reality itself. The Blessed Perfection has often said in his tablets that no matter how high the mind may soar, it cannot comprehend God. That which is in a lower station cannot understand the station above it. For instance, the vegetable kingdom cannot comprehend the station of the animal. The animal cannot know man, and so on. Man progresses perpetually toward the kingdom of spirit, which is God and which is everlasting. Therefore, as the human mind cannot encircle a kingdom which is everlasting, we cannot completely know the prophets who appear from that kingdom they have infinite knowledge for like the tides of the sea there is limitless volume and force back of them therefore we recognize the manifestations by their perfections and divine qualities but we cannot know them unless we rise to their station all human accomplishment is mortal the divine will alone is immortal man is composed of a mortal body and an indestructible spirit good qualities are divine perfections reflected in man the prophets came to this world to show us the way to immortality good qualities evidence their light bad qualities are as darkness when man feels the divine spark within him these godly graces appear as light in his actions god is eternal abdul baha's teachings aim to develop these heavenly qualities in us so that we may become eternal and immortal the soil of the soul must be made ready for the seed and its development then the fruit appears as the seed increases tenfold so both good and bad qualities bring forth a corresponding increase. The reality of spirit cannot be completely understood. We can simply know it through its attributes and good qualities. The prophets each had an individual mode of expression. In the outer language of their teaching, we must understand their terminology in order to comprehend their utterance. Moses had his characteristic mode of expression. Jesus spoke in parables. Muhammad spoke as if God were speaking. The prophets are like clouds. The word of God in them is the rain, which brings forth fruit from a parched and thirsty world. All the prophets are alike in essence and meaning, and all of them are the children of the blessed perfection.
End of section 17. Section 18 of Ten Days in the Light of Akka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Ten Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Section 18. Three Stories Told by Abdul Baha. The Disciples of Jesus, passing along the road and seeing a dead dog, remarked how offensive and disgusting a spectacle it was. The Christ, turning to them, said, Yes, but see how white and beautiful are his teeth. Thus teaching, that there is some good in everything. A master had a slave who was completely devoted to him. One day he gave the slave a melon, which when cut open looked most ripe and delicious. The slave ate one piece, then another, and another, with great relish, the day being warm, until nearly the whole melon had disappeared. The master picking up the last slice, tasted it, and found it exceedingly bitter and unpalatable. Why, it is very bitter. Did you not find it so? He asked the servant. Yes, my master, the slave replied. It was bitter and unpleasant, but I have tasted so much sweetness from thy hand that one bitter melon was not worth mentioning. A certain king had a subject who, having by a heroic action rescued the king from a great peril, was raised to a position of honor in the royal court. Here he continued to please the king, and finally came to occupy an apartment in the palace, close to the imperial chambers. The other courtiers of the king naturally became very jealous and lost no opportunity of carrying tales to the king, seeking to lower his opinion of the fortunate subject. One day they reported to the king that this man was unfaithful and dishonorable, that each night after everything was quiet in the palace it was his custom to go stealthily to a room in a remote corner of the palace carrying a bundle of stolen valuables which he hid there. The curiosity of the king was aroused. He watched and found the report true. Thereupon he summoned his retinue, and next evening, when the subject had gone to the room as usual, the king quickly followed, knocked upon the door, and demanded entrance. When the door opened, nothing was seen in the room but a dilapidated bed, some old clothes, and the suspected servant. What does this mean? demanded the king. Why do you come here like a thief every night? And what do you bring in the bundle you carry? O oh, king, replied the subject, thou hast blessed me with every gift and kindness, far more indeed than I can ever deserve. By thee I have been raised from poverty and lowliness to greatness and honor. Knowing this, and fearing I may grow negligent and fail to appreciate thy bounty and love, I come here each night to pray God that I shall ever remain grateful to thee for thy goodness, bringing with me my old peasant clothes which I put on, and then sleep in the humble bed in which I slept when thy love and mercy first lifted me up from my lowly state. Thus am I taught gratitude and appreciation of thy loving kindness. Abdul Baha's last words. Abdul Baha sent for me. I went to him in the little room where he writes. He said, Be strong, be firm. You are not leaving me. It is only your body that is going away. Your spirit 
will always be here. I shall always see you. There is work for you to do in the West. You must teach your husband the way to God. Then you will both grow spiritually and be one in his kingdom. I hope you may come again to Akka and remain with me a long time. You will always be here in the spirit. Think of this wherever you are and happiness will come to you. I held his hand a long time, asking that I might receive light and guidance. Allahu Abha. End of section 18. End of 10 Days in the Light of Akka by Julia M. Grundy. Read by Nicholas James Bridgewater in London, England.